pre-Moscow. Everyone and welcome to the grand final here of Grand Prix Moscow coming out of Russia. My name's Riley and I'm joined to my left, Mr. Frank Car Dr. Frank Carsten, I should say, and to my right it is the, uh, his uh, Hall of Fame compatriot, Raphael Levy. We have a blockbuster here for you today. We have Red White Burn on the left-hand side of your screen. Igor Gorbanov has made his way, his way all the way to the finals as the, uh, with his Boros deck. In addition to him, we have a mono black devotion deck being piloted by Sergei Zhelezhnov. These two wizards ready to leap into the fray and do battle. As we've ha as we've already heard, Frank Carsten has uh, is backing the uh, man on the right, the mono black devotion deck. The uh, the Frenchman over to my uh, to my right here, backing the red white burn deck. So we're going to find out which of these two wizards will reign supreme at the end of GP Moscow. The other thing is Igor with his uh, attitude, like he wants to play this. Have you seen, how, just look at him, that's not now because we can't really see it, but before that, he's like, look at his like face, he's like, okay, just bring it on. I'm look at that brooding intensity. No, you really, can see like, a hunger bring, for triumph. Bring it on, I'm, I'm ready, just like whatever, keep seven. Do you want seven, do you want, you just believe, just take seven, just like, bring the game on. No, you can you don't want to actually do that. But he's ready to go, is he, Yeah, he's saying. ready, he's to, ready go, to go, and uh, he's motivated. You could see the, 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 the the fire in his belly. Yeah, you can, that's well, right. That's why he's playing burn. <laughs> the like, fire like, in his belly. Like, he wants to let the fire out. I like, I like that. That's exactly what's happening. But a rather more conservative estimate on your uh, on your account, Frank Carsten. Yeah, well, I cannot uh, really speak for a uh, guy's uh, burning face or uh, fire in his eyes. But I do feel that uh, the the life gain cards in his deck, the Grey Motion of Ashbodel in particular, combined with uh, any discard spell to take out uh, a Skullcrack should be able to give Sir Guy uh, an advantage, but given that he's taking uh, taking some mulligans, mm, Igor might uh, might be in better shape uh, all of a sudden. He's going into the game with a little bit of an advantage, but Frank, I do want to ask you, why is it that life gain is so crippling for a burn deck? Well, the game plan of, uh, of Igor is to, uh, well, play maybe a couple guys, like a Young Pyromancer or Chandra's Phoenix, uh, to deal some early damage. But those are just gonna gonna fall to uh, to black removal spells. The main game plan of Igor is to uh, well, point lots of burn spells to uh, to Sergei's face. Like uh, you just have to uh, assemble four Boris charms and a War Leader's Helix, and the game is over. So that by itself is. Uh, Quite strong. And every piece of life gain is one more card that they have to find to deal with. Uh, yes. To deal with, absolutely. So we'll see how things pan out as uh, Zhelezhnov leads with a Mutavote followed up by a Swamp, and we see Igor with a Mountain followed by a Temple of Deceit. I actually like that play. Like it's not a Temple of Silence. I no, should say. not playing. Not playing the Young Pyromancer on turn two is uh, is crucial here. Like he has uh, a Young Pyromancer and a Shock, but he wants to play around the Devour Flesh that. Well, Sergei, Sergei's holding in his hand. So here we see a young Pyromancer, and he's able to immediately get value from the young Pyromancer by playing that shock. As you said, Raph, he's going to get a 1-1 one, one elemental token, regardless of what uh, his opponent does. I might have played it during my main step. Play the shock straight away. Yeah, that, that, that was an option, just to uh, because now we won't be able to shock end of turn. Well, in comes, in comes the Mutavolt here, and we may see a shock pointed at that, and indeed we do. So there we go. That is a... That is Zhelezhnov uh, yeah. choosing to uh, attack with the Mutavolt. Igor going after the Mutavolt with a shock and a Devour Flesh taking care of the Pyramids. I think I liked, I liked the shock main step. I actually, I actually agree. Just because of uh, Devour Flesh, yeah. even if uh, Serga would attack with the Mutavolt, it's not, uh, it's not the end of the world. Like he you, you might as well target yeah. him with the shock uh, anyway. He already played around the Devour Flesh. Just, yeah. just go, go ahead and do it like all the way. Mm -hmm. 
it's not like mutable is going to be a huge problem. You have other cars that do exactly like, like shock. So here's the second young pyromancer from Gorbanov. Uh, he's not on 121 life, as, uh, as likely as that may seem. I think he's still on 21. Uh, there's, a, there's a hero's downfall pointed at the uh, young pyromancer and a magma jet that... Uh, has yeah. no, that was a Boris charm was to, a Boris uh, give it sorry, to make it indestructible. You'll have to excuse me, I didn't quite see that. So there we are, we have a Mutavolt that's being uh, pushed to the battlefield. It may have been activated, he hasn't quite played yet. No, he makes his, uh, changes his mind here. And Sergei does, did, did not have uh, more lands, so right now he has to uh, tap his swamp that's enchanted with the Underworld Connections if he wants to play uh, any of his black removal spells. And paying life for cards is not exactly where you want to be when you're facing down a burn opponent, Frank. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not ideal. On the other hand, Underworld Connections allows you to draw into Grey Merchant of Ashbordel, so the, the card draw is definitely relevant. But at this point, Sergei is under assault from uh, four power of worth of creatures. Soon five. Yeah. No, not to mention the, uh, the uh, at least seven oh, and yeah, potentially and ten points of burn in his hand. So three minutes, is it going to be a... Uh, oh, that's, that's even worse. That is... Look at my hand, I think you're dead this turn. That is a particularly <laughs> so that bad would be play to have made. He can't cast three. Searing Blood this turn, but next yeah, I turn... Think, I think he's dead this turn. He's dead next turn. Next turn he'll be able to cast Searing nine. Blood, targeting the Lifebane Zombie, and deal, deal three upstairs as well. Yeah, he's, he's exactly dead. So the man with the numbers... Oh, no, 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 he, he doesn't have... No, no, he doesn't have... Oh, yeah, he is, he's dead. He's exactly dead. Okay, so why is he exactly dead? Yes. End, of, quick calculation. Correct. End of turn, yep. Magma Jet, two damage, he goes down to ten. He has another token. Attack for... Uh, no, you have one. to play the Searing Blood uh, before attacking. Well, yeah, well, on his turn. Mm -hmm. like, end of turn, Magma Jet, have, a kind of, have a, another dude. Yeah, he's just explaining to him exactly what... Oh, he wants him to actually play the, play the thing. Okay. You take two, go down to ten, have a token. Activate Mutable, attack for two, three, four, five, six, seven. And kill the... kill Lifebane Zombie. So we plus three, it'll be ten damage. So this game, according to two Pro Tour Hall of Famers, is in the bag. We'll see if, it, if things pan out exactly in that way. I don't doubt their word for a second, but we'll see if uh, Igor Gorbanov is able to put together the pieces in the same way and take game number one in the way that uh, my colleagues have said he'll be able to. Like, so Now he's like, yeah, I'm, I, I won. What, what are you expecting me to do? You're just dead on board. I, I tried to explain you. didn't want to listen to me. Look, I'm going to show it to you. You seem to have an enormous amount of, uh, amount of faith in Igor Gorbanov's capacity to uh, navigate these treacherous waters, so we'll see if he can bring it home. Yeah, take three. So active. take three from the, uh, from the Searing Blood when the, uh, when the, the life main zombie dies. Down to seven. And, look. and in comes the Mutavolt, and there we have game number one in the book. So Igor Gorbanov, a very quick victory here for the red-white burn deck as these two players hit their sideboards. Frank, I'm asking you now, what are the key sideboard cards in this matchup? You've already discussed Farika's Cure, of course, deal two damage to target creature and gain two life. What are some, other, some of the other cards that are really going to play a big role in this match as we hit the sideboards? The other big card in the Sergei's Leshnov sideboard is Duress. It is an excellent way to take out, well, any, any burn spell uh, from Igor's hand. And as opposed to a card like Totsis, you don't lose any life uh, while, while casting it. So those are the two big additions uh, to, to Sergei's deck, I'm sure. And the cards that he might uh, take out are maybe a couple of heroes downfall, because it's not very efficient. And Lifebane Zombie? The Lifebane Zombie uh, as well. I think you keep in Underworld Connections, just because uh, it works very well with Grey Merchant of Ashbordel, and you still need to be able to uh, draw into additional cards uh, in the late game. So we may be seeing some uh, duresses joining the Farika's Cure that uh, Zhelezhnov's almost certainly siding in. On the other side of the table though, uh, Raf Levy, what are, some of the, uh, what are some of the cards that may be sided in by Gorbanov? He's got access to a range of tools here. He's got things like Chain to the Rocks, Banishing Lights, another Chandra Pyre, oh, he's got a Chandra Pyre Master in there, Glare of Heresy, probably not going to be at his best in this matchup, you'd think. I think Adolin of the Great Revel He's got, coming in for sure. He's got two Eidolons of the Great Rebel in, in his sideboard. That would uh, pretty much cancel the Focus Cure life gain, which is very important as uh, Frank highlighted. Also, Toil Trouble might, might come in, but maybe not on the draw. On the play, if, we, if he loses this game, he's definitely bringing them in. 
and uh, because you know Sergei's plan is going to is going to be to draw cards with his. Uh, and toil trouble really yeah, one of those cards trouble, that yeah. punishes a, an opponent exactly. that's hoping to sandbag a lot of cards, a lot of answers. I'm not sure how many uh, chain to the rocks slash banishing lights he wants against mono black because he wants to put as much pressure as possible, and the creatures of mono black are probably a little too slow. Having said well, that, I you uh, still need to kill Desecration Demon. Yeah. Desecration Demon, I was about to say, is an enormous, uh, yeah. enormous uh, problem for the uh, for the burn deck. How important is it to have a chain to the rocks when that six six demon comes down? Very important, I would say. The, I yeah. mean, the like Desecration Demon can uh, finish the game in, in three swings uh, or so. Also, while blocking Chandra's uh, Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And the burn deck sometimes needs quite a few turns, quite a lot of draw steps to assemble uh, enough damage. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you don't want to play Chain to the Rocks. I'm saying how many do you want to play and how many ba do you board in Banishing Lights against that? That's the real question. Do you want to have more ways to deal with the demon or just four is enough? Well, it's a 3-1 it's a split at the moment between the main and the side. If that extra one comes in, it may or may not be joined by the Banishing Lights, Frank. I, I would say uh, put in uh, Chain to the Rocks because it's just a very efficient one mana answer to any creature. Banishing Light at three mana, it's not going to be all that efficient. I don't think that's where you uh, want yeah. to be in this uh, matchup. I agree. I, don't agree. I think Gorbano is probably in the business here of trying to end this game as quickly as possible because more than one Grey Merchant almost certainly would spell his demise here. So uh, definitely looking to get on the front foot here and capitalize on the advantage he's gained himself in, in, uh, in, the, ga in the first game. So we'll see exactly how these uh, players' sideboard plans unfold as we move on to game two. Players shuffling up and getting ready Getting into the zone, you can see the burning desire on the face of Igor Gorbanov, as, uh, <laughs> as uh, my French friend has pointed out already. Uh, tell me about Thoughtseize in this matchup. What do, uh, what's the utility or the role that Thoughtseize plays? Uh, obviously, an absolutely, an absolutely crucial card in the standard metagame. We've seen in, in any in any deck basically that runs Swamps is also running Thoughtseize. But in a in a game where your advers adversary is just nugging you every turn with spells. How much do you want a, th a thought season in that matchup? I think uh, it it might be uh, much better than uh, than you might think, because like if you play thought season and just take say a lightning strike that would go to your head, that's not gonna help you all that much. You basically save one point of life uh, in the process. A, a very but, very poor healing save yeah, yeah, yeah. in that instance. <laughs> but if you <laughs> play thought season and manage to snag something like uh, like a skull crack. That suddenly turns on uh, Grey Merchant of Ashwardell for lots of life gain, so that can be a huge play. Or if you're able to like take a Chain to the Rocks and resolve a Desecration Demon, that is uh, still quite uh, quite powerful. The, uh, the reason it would be bad, what thought it would be bad against Burn, is if you play a tempo a tempo game. Where you're, like, oh. you, you're, uh, you're putting some pressure, let's say you're playing a mono black aggro, and you have Thoughtseize, Thoughtseize might not be as good as it is in the, mod, in the in the control matchup. It sounds very much like, uh, based on Frank's analysis there, it seems very much like uh, the black player with the thought sees is looking to set up a point where, by removing Skullcrack, by removing Chain to the Rocks, he's going to be able to set up a, a place where his cards are going to be at their best. Like when you play thought sees to remove a burn spell from the red player, you're actually just giving him two mana. That's pretty much what it does. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Here but we see, you... as, uh, as Frank Carsten has suggested, Duress has been brought straight in from the sideboard, that is a uh, that is a turn one duress off a of swamp. So it's revealed Skullcrack, two mountains, a, a sacred foundry, a Boros charm, a magma jet, and a Chandra's Phoenix. Off goes the magma jet. That's going to hit the bin, and uh, Zhelezhnov passes the turn over back to Gorbanov, who draws a searing, searing blood. blood. I was about to suggest that he might have taken out the searing bloods because there are not so many targets after all. Well, speaking of oh, targets well, for Searing oh, Blood, wow. here is a pack rat. Wow, here is a pack rat that is that's turned exactly what on he wanted to the draw. Searing Blood, oh. and that is a brilliant draw from uh, Gorbanov there. That's, bru that's a brutal thing here. Here comes another threat though. Zhelezhnov curving Spectre. out nicely, going one, two, three. It'll be interesting to see if Gorbanov oh, can nice keep up try. with that. The perfect draw, lightning strike to the take care of it. lightning strike as well. There you go. So both of these players really. Re Here's Another a second Spectre. Nightfall Spectre, but no fourth land for Zhelezhnov. Now the Nightfall Spectre is huge uh, in this game because it can stop the Chandra's Phoenix from yeah. dealing any additional damage. And the double Boros Charm and Skullcrack left in Igor's hands won't uh, help him getting past the Nightfall Spectre. Uh, 
So here we see a, a little bit of a, a, he's on lockdown here. The Chandra's, uh, the Chandra's Phoenix has prevented the, the uh, oh, sorry, the Night Vale Spectre has prevented the Chandra's Phoenix from attacking. However, Zhelezhnov has chosen to get into the red zone. What are we going to see here? Are we going to see another, uh, another, no, we're not. Okay, so you'd think a removal spell perhaps in hand there for Zhelezhnov as I, as oh, uh, a draws a card. Gee. And it's a second lightning Sick. strike. There's a Bile Blight to take care of that, uh, that Phoenix. Yeah, the top of Igor's deck just rewarding him with exactly the perfect cards that he's looking for. Mm. It's and going very well for him. So uh, one, once I again, an attack from the 2-3. I think I'll just kill it here, right? You just you just killed the flyer, right? Or you you, you actually burn to the face here? Is this a point? Is this that that critical point in a yeah, when, in, you, when the burn in the burn deck exactly. where they have the, the the massive spells that they need in their hand? What has he got? He's got a lightning strike, a skull crack, and two boros charms. Maybe so just like that. Do it. It's already that's 14, 14 points yeah. of damage. Yeah, and the, it's he's only short one damage. Like, like one damage with the phoenix. If uh, yeah, exactly right. If he has a burn spell on the oh, top yeah, of his he deck, yeah, he gave it away. Yeah. He's not, he's not too afraid of the... Yeah, and if Sega would play something like a Grey Merchant of Ashpadel, you can always lightning yeah. strike the uh, Nightfall exactly, Spectre yeah. at that point. Yeah, I like this line. So there's Just a, go to the face. There's a pack rat. Here's a pack rat. So we're going to see some burn unloaded in no short order, I think. Here comes a Boros Charm. That's going upstairs. And what? And, uh, Four damage down to 13. And uh, oh, which one? <laughs> a lightning strike? Yeah, actually, keeping the skull crack yeah, for a possible Grey Merchant might be better here. If yeah. you're set on the plan of, uh, but you're getting back, you're getting back the Chandra's Phoenix. No, wait, don't forget about there that. There it is. So yes, indeed. It, it, what I, is the Chandra's Phoenix? The Chandra's Phoenix. He seems to have forgotten to return that what? to his hand. No, no way. He seems to have forgotten no, to return the Chandra's on. Phoenix to his hand as he ships the turn back. Unfortunately for Gorbanov, missing that opportunity to return the hasty two-two flyer to his <sighs> hand. As we see now, uh, Zhelezhnov in the tank, thinking about what his move is going to be, and it is just attacking, getting on the front foot, getting aggressive, sending in the Night Vale Spectre and the Pack Rat, keeping back the Mutavolt, however, with his other four lands. Oh, he gets the, the mountain, and he can actually play Skull Crack now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's a Grey Merchant. Grey Merchant, right. oh. And a Skull Crack in response, no surprises there. And, uh, is he getting? Is he? Well, has he forgot about the the phoenix? And a Boros charm to He's take him three down life. to three. It's gonna come down to the top of the deck now. Sugar down to three. I go down to, oh, to no. seven. If if it's a magma jet, that's gonna be like extremely bad for him, because there would have been even the, the. It is a chain to the rocks, taking care of that phoenix. Oh, taking care of that night bell specter, I should say. Here is the pack rat and the Sergei is, of Sergei the is not. I don't think Sergei's on seven. I think no, he's, I think he's no, on three. He's, on three, 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 he's on three life. You can see it on the uh, in the top right hand corner of your screen there. You can see it yeah. on his life total. So there is a discarded Tures to, to the pack rat. And Igor is at three? No. And Igor is at seven. At seven. So is that enough? Go. I think in it's enough, come. right? Two, three, four, five, six. That is seven. Seven, that's, that's enough. That's seven. There you go. Okay, so the the score's tied at one. And one for the uh, the two majors finding their way into the finals here at GP Moscow. The grand final being resolved now at the end of this game. One final game. You can see the intensity on Gorbanov's face. He's in the zone, although Raf, perhaps making a mistake or two there that were very very costly. Yeah, <laughs> not not getting the, the Phoenix back was definitely uh, not something. Yeah. Of course, these players have been playing uh, an oh, entire weekend. Yeah. You get tired uh, near the end. I've experienced that on uh, on several occasions, and sometimes just uh, miss something. Look also, lots of pressure uh, on the players. They're playing for uh, a first place uh, prize of four thousand dollars, as well as the glory, the trophy. Uh, Let's and not everything. forget about the glory and the prestige, of course, that comes with a pro to a, oh, sorry a Grand Prix victory, the pro to a qualifier, icing on that particular cake. You know the worst thing that could happen to Igor now. That he realizes he forgot about his phoenix. He doesn't seem to. He no, doesn't seem to it, realize. That's 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 better, because if he does, then it's gonna be like, oh man, and then starting like thinking about it and Absolutely. not focusing on the game. So it's probably better that he just totally. He, 
ignores it now. Really does need yeah. to avoid tilt at this point. That's right. This is the final of a Grand Prix, of course. Grand Prix Moscow coming to you live from Russia. It's been an amazing weekend. It's been a fantastic uh, showcase of what Russian Magic has to offer as these players shuffle up and deal for the final game here. Game three of the grand final here at Grand Prix Moscow. We saw a little bit of an, a change here for Igor Gorbanov. You uh, you mentioned before, Raf Levy, that um, he may be bringing in those toil and troubles when he's on the draw. On the play. On the play, yeah. sorry, on the play, now that he's on the I play. I think that might, that, 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 might be a, that might be a good thing, yeah, to deal like, the extra damage. I think he uh, brings them in against the Sphinx Revelation. I think that's the, that's the main plan for Tool Trouble. Sure. But he might bring them in against Mono Black. I'm not sure. Could be. Well, time will tell if that card, if, if the split card from Dragon's Maze is going to have an impact on the way that this game plans out. The players chatting, getting ready for the, uh, for the final game here that's going to determine our champion. We did see a chain to the rocks there. I, I was unsurprised to see it. I, I do wonder whether the, uh, whether the, the fourth copy has been brought in, Frank Karsten. <laughs> Well, you uh, got to imagine that if Igor did something like uh, board out a lightning strike for a chain to the rocks and the card that he drew in the very last turn of that game was that chain to the rocks, he is going to regret that decision uh, very much because he just needed three more damage to finish off Surgai. And chain to the rocks, it does a lot. It's a great card, but it doesn't deal uh, damage to the opponent. No, that's right. And very much what, uh, very much what the burn deck is in the business of doing here. So we will see how, uh, we will see how this uh, game pans out. But it was interesting to see uh, Zhelezhnov's start of 1-2-3 from uh, Jerez into, uh, into Pakrat into Night Vale Spectre, being answered perfectly almost mm -hmm. by his opponent. He got the perfect jaw. That's the... That, that, that's scary. It was quite astonishing. That's scary when you lose a game when you have the perfect draw. The, uh, what do I want here? I want a lightning strike. Oh, lightning strike. Sweet. What do I want here? I want an, uh, a searing, a searing, blood, searing blood. Oh, yes. Yeah, like, oh. And still, unfortunately, not able to get there. So we'll see how things turn we'll see, see out. sometimes also out. a bit uh, tilting if you're playing Mono Black uh, Devotion. You play the rest, strip the opponent off of uh, the key cards. And then he actually draws the the perfect uh, yeah that, that can be particularly that, of course that that, that, that's just the down the the downside of discard uh, spells you can never protect yourself against uh, the top of your opponent's deck absolutely right and if you need uh, Frank uh, I'm sure people don't need reminding if you need protecting from that particular thing turn my friends to blue because it is of course magic's greatest color uh, <laughs> and I, I'm sure we're all in agreement about that are we not uh, Raphael Levy? definitely definitely absolutely without a shadow of irony there on the face of the Frenchman. So let's get underway here with our final match. The players are shuffling and ready to go, presenting their decks. They've shuffled their opponent's decks and they're going to draw their opening hand. So let's see how this ends up going. An opening seven drawn for both players. Gorbanov looking at his cards. Zuleznov also drawing his seven. So what, what can we see here? Looks like a good mix of lands and spells in Gorbanov. Oh, he and, uh, has just slammed the, the Sacred that, Foundry into play. Is that two, two, uh, two young pyromancers? Two young yep. pyromancers. So he's not going to play around the Devour Flesh here. So he two young Pyromancers and at Chandra's Phoenix with a wall it is Helix hitting the bin thanks to that duress. So once again, Sergei, uh, Sergei Jelezhnov ma and managing to open the game with a one mana discard spell off his swamp. And Pyromancer. He's a young Pyromancer. Number one. Of course, uh, Igor seems... doesn't have a ton of uh, spells to trigger the young Pyromancer. Not at the but moment, even as no. a 2-1, it's uh, efficient. <laughs> Freakas Cure is the perfect answer to All it, though. Right, Absolutely. It's going to buffer his life total up to 22. And there's a Chandra's Phoenix that's going to take it straight back down to 20. He has the land. Oh, wow. He's going to... And there's a Thought Igor's going to have nothing left in his hand. And the rest. He's going to take the Pyromancer and the rest, the, light, the remaining Lightning Strike. So Zhelezhnov's uh, discard spells tearing strips off, uh, off Gorbanov's hand and there goes the final spell in his hand left with just a mana confluence which with only his as his final card, there's a lightning strike off the top, in comes the Chandra's Phoenix, that's going to take him down to 16. At, uh, two so damage. Chandra's Phoenix is going down now I think, or is there going to be a, a demon? No, he just passes the turn straight back and there's a chain to the rock, so he's got a bit, a bit of insurance against a... Uh, uh, it's got a bit of insurance against perhaps a desecration demon here. 
End of turn, yeah. End of turn, lightning strike. And get the Phoenix back And this the time? Phoenix mm -hmm. back right. in the hand. So there we go. Okay, not missing it this time around. Yeah, if Sergei cannot get uh, like a big threat or a repetitive source of card advantage, like Underworld Connections uh, in play, he might be losing the late game to grinding yeah. via, via the Chandra's Phoenix. Phoenix, that's it's right. So we see the Phoenix hitting the bin once again. Uh, second time around, with the Munival coming in for two damage, the Lezhnov obviously not, in, not having an enormous amount to spend his mana on as these players play at a blistering pace. 30, he's still on 13. And he's that's on Skullcrack, get the Phoenix back. There comes, there's the this Phoenix time, in the This hand time again. the Phoenix doing quite a lot of work. So a mountain and if you were the asking if, uh, if, he brought, if he brought in the, the Banishing Light, I was light, just about to say, we can did. see there a Banishing Light in the hand of Gorbanov. So he's going to be able to deal with problem, problematic permanence from Zhilezhnov um, as Zhilezhnov plays a Scryland. He's looking for a... And draws another land off the top of his deck. A Sacred Foundry passes the turn. Uh, if nothing else happens, uh, yeah. then eventually Mutavolt is going to uh, finish off the game in uh, and seven more attacks. That's a helix. Wall leader's that's helix. a wall leader's helix. All mm -hmm. right, so that's going to uh, that's going to perhaps have an impact on uh, on the life totals here. Although a grey merchant of Asphodel, I think, is the card in Jaleshnov's hand. There it is, indeed. Yes. Yeah, so a Jure oh, no, a thought sees a thought sees first. Thought sees. That's mm. yeah, j just in case of uh, skull crack, you need to uh, take that out yeah. first before playing the. Green Merchant. See if the coast is clear, but he's going to go. He's going to take a fair chunk of damage off that. He's going to lose two life from the Thoughtseize and a further four damage taken from the uh, from the Warlord Helix. So he's down to eight. Is he going to take the Phoenix here? He could. Uh, he make has, his opponent. I think I saw a Grey Merchant in his hand. He does have a Grey so Merchant. So he's going to go hand. up to ten life. So it is the Phoenix. The Phoenix hitting the bin once again. Oh, he's going. Oh, he's going down to six. And there's a Grey Merchant. Okay, so a Grey Merchant just eight. for two. Back up to eight. And with very little action in his hand, apart from some reactive removal and spells, another and land. there's another land for Gorbanov, and he leaves a magma, magma jet on top. Vanishing uh, Light going to take care of that uh, yeah. that grey merchant. Is it the right one? It's duress. Duress. Okay. Then it doesn't really matter. I think uh, it now it doesn't matter. I think change to the rock would have been better. Yeah, just in case of uh, underworld, underworld connections. connections. Yeah. Because Syria is still at a relatively safe eight life, and you cannot give him the uh, opportunity of drawing safe. too many cards. So and here comes a magma jet. Relatively safe. safe. <laughs> <laughs> here comes a magma jet, taking Jaleshnov down to seven. Wow. And then on the top, ah, two burn spells. So there we go. So now we mm. have the Chandra's Phoenix back onto the battlefield. Wild Blight, Blight okay. putting that back in his graveyard. So that Chandra's Phoenix has been back and forth quite a number of times. I'm not entirely sure exactly how many times that, that Phoenix has been. Uh, He's on six. Another, so there's a lightning strike off the spell. top, down to three. There's the Jack Phoenix. It. Another Bile Blight taking out the Phoenix for at least the fourth time. Maybe even the fifth or the sixth. That Jandos Phoenix has dominated has this game completely. has been around, and we know that there's a Magma oh, Jet man, on the exciting. top. So this could be... No, he had, I could, I could, He's on one, an Eidolon of the Great Revel and a Mountain being yeah. sent below decks. See you later to those two cards. Back comes the Phoenix onto the battlefield. Oh, for Rika's oh. Cure, taking him up to three life. Zhilezhnov has all the answers. And he has a... Um, uh, Devour Flesh in hand too. So he's on the three life, I think. Mm -hmm. And he can actually, actually Devour Flesh uh, his yeah, own guys guy. to gain some life if he wants to. So he's Still on three life with the Devour Flesh. Another and Phoenix. Nightmare Spectre in play. There's a second Phoenix. Maybe you keep it in hand in the hope that Sir Guy attacks with Nightfall Spectre and then you can get in with the Phoenix. I, th I think you play it. Right? Like if you draw a, a burn spell, you want to be able to... Uh, to burn an attack with the, the other Phoenix. Yeah, fair enough. So that's the line obviously taken by Gorbanov like here. Like you don't He's actually want your opponent to attack. Mm. I don't know, this is, this is, this is a... And this oh, is a desecration demon. Where's the point of betrayal? We need it. <laughs> desecration demon, a 6-6 six, six, and a 2-3. Oh, yeah. Locking I think, down the creatures on I think I think that, that should do it. Desecration demon. Mm. With the uh, Devour flesh, flesh in hand, flesh in hand possibly game six. Do it, yeah. Yeah. It's huge. So here we see an attack by the Night Vale Spectre. That's coming across as a 2 3. We're going to see what Gorbanov has to say about that. Just a mountain in his hand, I believe. Yeah. Mm. Like, are you, do you want to block this? Oh, yeah, you don't want, you don't want to tap the. Oh, you want to tap this guy? 
So go oh man, if he draws, oh, the I see. I see what he wants to play. So if he draws a burn spell. If he, he, if he draws a shock, he wants to draw a shock. If he draws a shock, he can rebuy both of the Chandra's Phoenix to his hand, yeah. cast them both, and attack with them. So there's a Boros charm. Uh. Doesn't sacrifice the Phoenix to tap the Desecration. Good. You're down to six. And it's, it's close. A young Pyromancer. I think. I think it's gonna ships the turn back after casting the two one. From yeah, I think the Devour Flesh is gonna be good enough. Mm -hmm. And the more he sacrifices, the more he, life he gives. Yes, there we go. So now 7-7 seven, seven offering uh, Zhilezhnov the chance to gain 7 life off the back of a Devour Flesh. Igor Gorbanov is on two. 6 life. He blocks the Mutavolt, takes 2 from the Night Vale Spectre, oh, which is oh, ripping a rocks. chain to the rocks off the top. Not of a big fan of the block here. It's a skull crack off the top for 3. He has a Devour Flesh to target himself. Yeah, okay. That's fine. You can sacrifice. I'm not a big fan of the block, the Mutavolt. Because he's, if, if he's on four, then... Like, he needed to do a burn spell. Then he would have burned his face, have a token to tap the... to tap the demon another turn, and attack with the... with the... the young Pyromancer. So we'll see here now. This looks like he's sacrificed. Uh, he's sacrificed. He's, he's cast a. Um, he's cast the the devour flesh, targeting himself, Shalejnov, in response to that skull crack, having taken three, as well. So he's down to. He's down to seven life now. He's mm -hmm. down to seven life. No, it's the other way around. Gorbanov having a Chandra's Phoenix in hand. That's going to take him down to five. So the life totals at the moment are four for Gorbanov, and five for Shalejnov. <laughs> five. A pack rat. And there's a pack rat, okay. And there's another phoenix in his hand. This game, this, this game, game is not... Is absolutely right down to the wire. It all depends on the cards if on the top of Gorbanov's deck. Searing blood. Oh, wow. Searing blood Ships the, the turn back, no attacks, draw. untap off the top. It's a war leader's helix. There we go. That is the game for Igor Gorbanov. Congratulations to the champion of GP Moscow, ripping a helix off the top. Randy Bueller, eat your heart out. Just like that, our champion is Igor Gorbanov, the red, white burn mage. Congratulations. Actually, I'm well not dead. <laughs> done indeed. Sergei Zhilezhnov succumbing, but a hard fought victory indeed for, Go oh, for Gorbanov. What a palpitating game of magic absolutely fantastic that was so close near the end i mean he, he had to top deck uh, like some burn spell there, there there were a couple of uh, cards like that in his deck but with that devour flash for for seven life i thought zelashnov was gonna win that one for sure but yeah. wow didn't prove to be that enough was, that was really Incredible. close that did was not really prove close. to be enough life gain for him at the end of the day the clutch war leaders helix as we welcome you back to the booth Riley Knight with Raphael Levy and Frank Carsten. What a game of magic. <laughs> yeah, that was what an a game final. of magic that was. Exciting what a final. fitting final. What an exciting result for an exciting GP. Gentlemen, it's been an absolute blast and I'm so pleased to have had a, such a, a fantastic event unfold for our viewers back at home. What a result. Thinking back over the weekend though, what are some of our favorite moments? We can perhaps put the, uh, the top deck wall letters helix to the side for one moment, Raph Levy, as you share with us perhaps your 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 favorite moment from GP Moscow this weekend. I think I think this is the best. I think nothing like, can top closing, it in your mind. Closing the closing a tournament like this, like with this really really tense final. Game two was really tense. Game, game one was really tense too. Absolutely. Game three was like, <sighs> what a fantastic final! Oh, I love it. Absolutely oh. magical. He's, be, he's being thrown thrown in the air by his he's friends. He's being thrown <laughs> in the air by his friends. I can confirm that for you. Absolutely. Now to my left. And I, what can you tell me, Dr. Frank? I mean, I'm, I'm all, I've all, almost never seen any GP winner that was as happy as Igor there. Like, after he finally got the, the last couple of damage in, he jumped up and he jumped up and down, like, like in excitement, high-fived all of his friends. Absolutely. Like, like he, he was so excited. It was awesome to see, and that's also a great feeling that you can have when winning the GP. But besides that, some, uh, some other things. I, though we didn't see them in, uh, in the finals, 
what I did really like uh, in the top eight uh, of this tournament were like uh, Efim Kashapov and his four-color mid-range deck. Absolutely. Like, 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 like a beautiful concoction and he played it because he made it himself and he liked it. Similarly, Dmitry Budakov coming here with like a band control deck, an unorthodox choice. He, why did he choose it? Just because it has the cards he likes. And it also shows that Magic caters to, uh, to many players and if you just play the cards that you enjoy, that you like, you can make it uh, to the top as well. All the way to the top eight, well mm. done to him with his Bant deck. But that is, unfortunately, that all good things must come to an end. I'd like to thank a couple of people before we uh, say goodbye. Obviously, the gentleman beside me, we've got Raf Levy, we've got Frank Carsten. These guys, obviously, have done a fantastic job this weekend. Standing right over there is Mr. Stephen Leeming, our producer. He's waving to us, which makes no sense whatsoever. We also have Rich Hagen to my left as well. Uh, keeping things, uh, keeping a steady hand on the teller throughout the weekend. Thanks so much for all of your uh, help, support and guidance, Rich. Our text coverage people, we've got Ollie and Ola. They're, you can read all of their fantastic content at Daily MTG. Well done to them and thanks so much. In addition to that, all of the judges and event staff keeping this, uh, keeping this event running smoothly. And of course, the staff at Dazzle Events who have put, made this weekend possible in the first place. And Wizards of the Coast for providing us with such a fantastic game and a fantastic opportunity to showcase it from Russia to the rest of the world. But that, as they say, is that from GP Moscow here in Russia. My name's Riley, and just remember, of course, that we're all winners for having taken part. <laughs>